figure illustrates an airplane landing on a navy aircraft carrier and being arrested by a cable pull T on the airplane arresting hook. If the airplane weight is 12,000 pounds and the airplane is given a constant acceleration of 3.5 G, find the hook pull T, the wheel reaction R, and the distance d between the line of action of the hook pull and the airplane cg if the landing velocity is 60 miles per hour what is the stopping distance okay so we are going to use the simple equilibrium equations for uh, finding out this so the inertia force ma that is the mass into acceleration mass is nothing but w by g into a okay w is given 12000 pounds divided by g and acceleration 3.5 g given the problem gg will get cancelled so 12000 into 3.5 42000 pounds is the inertia force inertia force now the aircraft is landing nothing but decelerating okay so you can see the inertia force is acting forward if it is accelerating means the inertia force will act uh, backward that is towards the right hand side okay so you can see here the inertia force acts opposite to the direction of acceleration hence to the left as shown in the figure so now the unknown force is t okay unknown force is t hook pull and the reaction wheel reaction from the static equilibrium equations we can uh, find out okay sigma fx okay left hand side force is negative so minus ma plus t cos 10 t cos 10 is equal to 0 so from this we can find t is equal to 42,700 pounds. Now resolve along the vertical axis, that is z axis, 12,000 acting downward minus plus r wheel reaction acting upward minus uh, 42,000, that is 700 t is the t sine 10 acting downward, so minus is equal to zero. Now r from that uh, expression you can find the r is equal to 19,420 pounds. Then how to find this distance d? Let us take moment about the center of gravity sigma mcg, sigma mcg, r, that is 19,420 into 24, force into perpendicular distance, clockwise with respect to this, so positive, and t, t is the act, full acting here, t into this distance perpendicular is d, okay? t into d is equal to zero from this you can find d then landing velocity how to find so v square minus v naught square is equal to 2as okay so we know that the final velocity is zero because we are going to hold the aircraft stop the airplane or whatever it is so v square minus u square is equal to 2as acceleration is 112.7 given the problem here in this case it's nothing but deceleration so we are taking the negative so and the S is the stopping distance from this. We calculate and we get the answer to be 34.4 feet. So we have calculated all the parameters. Okay, T and the reaction R and the distance D. I mean this distance D uh, between CG and uh, line of action of the pull and the stopping distance 34.4 feet. Okay, so this is given in an FPS units. Uh, in exam, you will get in SA units. Okay, SA units. So here G is nothing but the value of G in SI units. We take it as 9.81 meter per second square. Whereas here G is equal to 32.2 actually, 32.2 uh, feet per second square. Now let us go to the next problem. An airplane equipped with float, where are you having the float? Okay, this is the float, okay. Is catapulted into the air from a Navy cruiser as illustrated in figure. The catapulting force P gives the airplane a constant horizontal acceleration of 3G. That is 3 into 32.2. It's nothing but 96.6 feet per second square. Okay. That force is force acting direction also mentioned in the figure. Okay. Uh, in the float. The gross weight of airplane is 9,000 pound and the catapult track is 35 foot long, find the catapulting force P and the reactions R1 and R2 
from the catapult car the engine thrust is 900 pound direction also given what is airplane velocity at end of track run are you seeing inertia force is acting right hand side because it is being accelerated so ma is equal to mass w by g weight is given gg will get cancelled so w into 3 27000 pounds then resolve from static equilibrium equations sigma fx is equal to 0 left hand side force negative minus 900 and you can see here minus p catapulting force acting left hand side plus 27000 that is inertia force acting right hand side is equal to 0 and from this p is equal to 26100 pound now to find r2 let us take a moment about a about this point a okay W is that is nine thousand nine thousand okay nine thousand into fifty five you can see the distance from A to the CG nine thousand into fifty five clockwise with respect to A so positive and twenty seven thousand is the inertia force twenty seven thousand into seventy eight clockwise positive with respect to A and nine hundred gives anti clockwise negative nine hundred into seventy eight plus five eighty three anti clockwise negative. And R into 85 anticlockwise with respect to A negative. From this we can find R2. So R2 is known. Now resolving the vertically, sigma f z is equal to zero. R1 plus R2 is equal to uh, 9000. Okay. So R2 is given. R1 we have to find uh, the 9000 acting down node. So negative. So minus 9000. So from this we can find R1, which is nothing but acting downward. That's the meaning of this. So we have assumed that R1 will act upward, but uh, by calculation you're getting a negative. So assume direction is wrong. So it is nothing but acting downward. So how to find the velocity at the end of catapult track means v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s. Okay. So v square is the final uh, velocity, and the initial velocity is zero because it's starting. So is equal to two. A is acceleration given in the problem, and S is the distance, and we can find V is equal to eighty two feet per second. So we have calculated uh, inertia force, then P value, then we have calculated R two, R one, and V. R two, R one, V. Okay. Now going to the next problem. assume that the transport airplane as illustrated as illustrated in figure just assume that the transport airplane is as illustrated in figure as just touched down in landing and that a breaking force of 35000 pound 35000 pound on the rear wheels is being applied to bring the airplane to rest the landing horizontal velocity is 85 miles per hour that is 125 feet per second square neglecting air forces on the airplane and assuming the propeller forces are zero what are the ground reactions r1 and r2 what is the landing run distance with the constant breaking force with the constant breaking force okay so here i have let us resolve it horizontally okay because 35000 is given the breaking force breaking force will be equal to this uh, inertia force equating that max is equal to 35000 m is nothing but w by g into ax from this we can find ax okay ax is equal to 35000 divided by w w is 100000 pound g is nothing but 32.2 okay feet per second square so we can find the acceleration 11.27 feet per second square so to find the landing run again v square minus u square is equal to 2as okay and here Uh, one minus 125. That is 125 square. Is given the problem. 125. The horizontal velocity is equal to two into 
the acceleration is nothing but a deceleration okay it's nothing but a deceleration into s so s is equal to 695 feet 695 feet so how to find this reaction r2 okay let us take moment about a sigma ma is equal to 0 sigma ma is equal to 0 100000 into this distance 21 that's nothing but 38 minus 17 21 clockwise so positive and 35000 35000 into 9 okay 35000 into 9 Right, thirty-five thousand into nine. This is the force. M A X is the thirty-five thousand. So thirty-five thousand into nine, into nine, which gives anti-clockwise negative. Okay, R into thirty-eight, which is okay. R into thirty-eight. So R is nothing but forty-seven thousand pound. R into thirty-eight, which is nothing but forty-seven thousand pound. So now resolving vertically, sigma F is a, Z is equal to zero, forty-seven thousand. That is. R1 plus R2 is equal to weight. From this, we can find <clears throat> R1. So, moving to the next problem. So, the figure shows that the airplane weighs 14,000 pound. It is flying horizontally at a velocity of 500 miles per hour. When the pilot pulls it upward in a curved path with a radius of curvature. 2500 feet assume the engine thrust and airplane drag equal opposite and collinear with each other find the acceleration of airplane in z direction wing lift and tail forces airplane load factor now for example acceleration is equal to v square by r okay so directly we are getting the formula already these formulas we will study in flight dynamics okay <coughs> acceleration v square by r so v is 733 given feet per second and r is the radius of the turn or radius of curvature so we get the acceleration uh, 215 feet per second square okay so if you divide this by uh, 32.2 you will get some g okay 6.68 g or something like that okay so the inertia force how to find inertia force normal to this ma z is equal to w by g into the acceleration w is weight is given uh, acceleration in terms of g 6.68 g g will get cancelled so if you multiply 14000 and 6.68 you will get 93520 and if you take moment about cp moment about the cp And fourteen thousand plus nine three five two zero. You can see here fourteen thousand. Okay, I'm taking moment about this. M A Z and W acting at the same distance and same sense, the same direction. So anti-clockwise. So that's why it is taken as a minus. M A Z sum it up. M A Z and weight into eight and T into T into two ten clockwise. T into two ten clockwise. So from this we can find the T tail force or tail load. Okay. Now if you resolve vertically means so vertically what all the things we are getting minus M A Z plus L uh, minus T minus W. Okay. And from this we can find out L. L is the lift. So the airplane load factor is nothing but uh, airplane lift divided by W. So airplane lift when we say airplane lift overall. We have to consider the tail load also. So tail lift minus, sorry, wing lift uh, minus the tail load is 4,100 divided by the weight is 14,000. 7.7 is the airplane load factor. Usually load factor is called as L by W. So since in this calculation tail load is also given, if tail load is not given, means simply you can take it as a L by W. Since it is given, so we have to subtract as it is acting downward. 